Shalom. Giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. I've been dealing with uh, this uh, topic on lust of the flesh. Tonight I want to go into lasciviousness. So we're going to always start with Colossians 3 and 17. To go to the throne of the Most High, we have prayed and asked the Most High to send forth His Spirit, His Spirit to guide us in understanding His Word, as He had holy men to write, as they were moved by His Spirit, the Spirit of Amashiach, which is the Word of the Most High. Colossians 3.17, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all by Hashem of Mashiach Kabashah in the name of the Lord and Savior. Give me thanks to the Most High and the Father by Hashem of Mashiach Kabashah in the name of the Lord and Savior. So all we say and do is going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior, going to the Most High on our behalf to bring forth this edification of His Word, the Most High's Word. So let's look up lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Uh, lascivious it's uh, lustful lecherous lewd salacious lasciviously which is an adjective and lasciviousness which is a noun so we've been dealing with the lust of the flesh, so we're going to deal with that lustful. And we're going to the scriptures and look at different, you know, accounts of this type of behavior. Go to Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians 3 and 5. Colossians 3 and 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetedness, which is idolatry. See, we have to be come. A new creature. By putting these things away from us. And not actually allowing them to. Have control of us. Because now you're dealing with idolatry. And. With idolatry. You're not dealing with the most high. But you're dealing with. Some other entity or idol besides him and his name is jealous that's why he tells us to put these things away for which things sake the wrath of the most high cometh on the children of disobedience so to do these things you're going to be disobedient to the heavenly father the most high In which you also walked some time when you lived in them. When you did any of these particular unclean, full, abominable, sinful things. But now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. You gotta change your whole life. You used to curse a lot. You got to stop doing that. And lie not one to another. You're supposed to be lying on your brother or lying on something that you lying about to make yourself look good. Seeing that you have put off what? The old man with his deeds. See, that's very important. Because the most I knows. Anybody know the most I know? So you put off the old man with his deeds. 
the deeds of the old man. How you used to be. That's what you're talking about. You have made this change. And it changes for the better because you're not disobedient to the way the Most High would have you to be. Because ain't no liars going through the kingdom. Ain't no fornicators. Ain't no uncleanness. No inordinate affection, which is lasciviousness. Evil con con concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. You're not going to the kingdom. And this is all about Allowing our names to be written in the book of life that we can have everlasting life. Well, in other words, you're wasting your time. Verse 10, and have put on the new man. You that the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. See? It's very important. Very important. As an Israelite, to change for the better and not be disobedient. Regardless of how anybody look at you, you are who you are. And if you want to be somebody different, then go out there, be a Gentile, be a heathen. You're going to see that you're going to fit right into this category of lasciviousness. Because that's what they're all about. Lust and that's what they promote. Adultery and, and, and fornication and uncleanness and uh, vile affections and so forth. Men with men and women with women. That's that's a vile effect of the most I says in Romans the first chapter, the 26th verse down. I mean, it's vile. You know, sexual immorality. It's not right. In many ways, different ways. Impurity and lust and evil desires and greed. Just overwhelming you so you can't change. You can't become a new man. 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Verse 3. For this is the will of the Most High, even your sanctification, <laughs> that ye should abstain from fornication. Fornication. Dealing with idolatry. Something outside of the Most High power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob being the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. Something outside of his law, such commandments, which will be idolatry. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel, this body that we live in, in sanctification and honor before the Most High. But see, some men only fear to fear men. They don't fear the Most High. Because you don't have to fear him. You have to be scared. You have to be afraid of him. You have to respect him. But you're going to respect him. And you're going to be afraid of me. You're going to be scared of me. Eventually, if you're not now, you're going to learn to be. Believe this for what's written in this word. Say, listen to what it say. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not the most high. Come on. Even as the Gentiles, which know not the most high. So they're doing these things. So I say, if you ain't going to become this new man, you're going to deal with like I just said. And the Most High Spirit then brought it forth, as I said it, the lust of concupiscence. Look up that word, concupiscence. 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 Sexual desire. Lust. Still the same topic. Lust. Designed is strongly. It's overwhelmed with it. Them demons just come out and just show forth. People can see them. Them lust demons. Them sexual lust, strong demons that people have in them. They have not changed. I don't care how much you know. If you ain't changing, you remain the same. You still that same lustful demon with concupiscence and lasciviousness. Hmm. Say, not in the lust of concupiscence, verse 5, even as the Gentiles, which know not the Most High. So no matter how much you teach them, the Most High said, which know not the Most High. And it tells you in Wisdom Solomon 5 and 7, to say, we worried ourselves the way of wickedness and destruction. We have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Most High, the Mashiach that was shy, we have not known it. That's when salvation is coming to the 12 tribes of Israel, the one-third, mind you. 
of the 12 tribes of Israel. The Gentiles are going to be saying, we have not known the Most High. And the Mashiach was shot. So all your teaching and all the things that you can bring forth, they already got their little doctrines that they believe in until death. Until salvation is coming on this earth. Let you know that the past, the present, and the future is all here in the Word. Or say, the Gentiles which know not the Most High. This is what they do. This is what you're following. That's why you can put the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. Perfect example. Because they know not the Most High, and you don't know the Most High if you're going to follow suit with what they're doing to make you be the same way. Make you be dumbed down. You're supposed to be awake, waking, out of darkness, out of ignorance, and not knowing. You're supposed to be knowing. There's not going to be no excuse. No excuse for any one of us. There's too much being given, and much is required. Believe that. So from there, we're going to look at... Uh, uh, Proverbs... Second chapter, Proverbs 2 and 16. Because this, I mean, we got to warn you. I got to warn you because the Spirit says it. It says, uh, Look at verse 16. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. So we got to be delivered, brothers, from the strange woman. First and foremost, the Most High said, the strange woman is one of these. In Deuteronomy 7 and 3, the Most High told us concerning these strange women, these other women of these other nations, he said, Deuteronomy 7 and 3, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Why? For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Most High be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly? So, no matter how you look at it, if you are dealing with these strangers, these strange women outside of our nation, they're going to turn your mind away from following the Most High. And understand this, brothers. If you got a woman that's not trying to deal with these law statutes commandments of the Most High and following the true faith of the Most High, which is they Gentiles too, what's the difference? You got one of these strangers these strange women of another nation, or you got a stranger that's acting like the strangers of the other nations within our nation that have you so you ain't following what you're supposed to be following, doing what you're supposed to be doing as an Israelite. Same, and what's the difference? You got a stranger of the other nation, you got a stranger of Israelites. Keep that in mind. Because a lot of brothers, they they play it, they playing hardcore in front of men, but they know they woman ain't dealing in this truth. Ain't dealing with this truth at all. They're still dealing with Christmas and Thanksgiving and all of that. Easter and all that. Don't get mad at me. Talk to the most high. He the one speaking. Expressly. And see, that's what happened with Solomon. Most I told us, don't give, don't give with these women. They're going to turn your mind away from following him. What did King Solomon do? He did that. He did just what the Most High told us not to do. And the Most High give us the understanding so we don't have to go through that. I mean, come on. That's so why we got to really examine ourselves in knowing what we need to do in front of the Most High. He's, he's watching everything. His eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, seeing everything that we do. 1 Kings 11 and 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Would it tell you in Proverbs 2.16 to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words? See? 
First Kings 11 and 1, but King Solomon loved many strange women. We done read what the law said. He said they're going to turn your mind away from following the Most High, right? But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, women of all these other nations, Chinese and, and, and Japanese and Caucasian and Africans, other nations concerning which the Most High said unto the children of Israel, what we just read, Deuteronomy 3 and 4, you shall not go in to them. Don't have no relation with them, relationship with them. It's not hate, it's just the truth. Neither shall they come in unto you. They're not supposed to be getting with you. Why? For surely they will turn away your heart, your mind, that's your mind, after their gods. Solomon claimed to these in love. It's sad. It's really sad because most I love Solomon. You know, Solomon come from uh, really a, a mixed up relationship between King David and Bathsheba. That's why I said we can't really look at our ways and thoughts as the ways of the Most High because the Most High loves Solomon. Solomon came from that adulterous murderous uh, relationship that David created with Bathsheba. Mosiah killed their first son, but he loved Solomon. That was the next son. So why Mosiah is long-suffering. He's compassionate more so than us. We want to destroy each other over nothing and sit there and grin and chin for the, in front of the enemy. Verse 3, and he has 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. That's a thousand women. And his wives turned away his heart. His wives turned away his heart. His wives turned away his mind. That's why we read in the Proverbs 2 and 16. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Saying the right words to you. I love you, baby. Oh, you're so handsome, but you, you look so divine. Next thing you know, you caught in a trap. Listen, for it came to pass, verse 4, 1 Kings 10, 11 and 4, for it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart, his mind, after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the most high, his power, as was the heart of David his father. His wives turned, his, turned away his mind from following the Most High as he had been doing all his youth up. Hmm. For Solomon went after Osiris, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Most High and went not fully after the Most High as did David his father. You understand this? When you look at Psalms 96 and 5. Hold that. Look at Psalms 96 and 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols. So you want to follow any type of uh, belief that these other nations dealing with? They're dealing with idols. I see a big Buddha, big as me almost. Bigger than me, wider than me. In a dang place, I went to get an estimate. I was like, man, wow, look at that big Buddha. He was huge in front of these people. It's right there in front of them, in front of their desk. Their God, right there. Like, wow. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Most High made the heavens. Because he know that people will be worshiping the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. Comets, everything, right? Going back to King Solomon. First Kings 11, chapter, verse 6. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Most High and went not fully after the Most High, as did David his father, King David. His father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Shamash, the abomination of Moab, Chinese, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon, Japanese, 
And likewise did he for all his strange wives. As you know, these are strange wives for us as Israelites, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. These idols. And the Most High was angry with Solomon because his heart, his mind, was turned from the Most High power of Israel, which had appeared unto him, him appeared, appeared, appeared unto him twice, came to him two times. <clears throat> And had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Most High commanded. See? That's why the Most High split the kingdom. We used to be one kingdom. Northern, Northern and Southern tribes used to be one kingdom. One nation. But now the Most High split it. Northern tribes and Southern tribes. Going back to Proverbs. 2 and 16. See, you gotta, we got to be saved from this. We're talking about being saved. It's something we got to be saved from here too. And these are examples we can look at so you don't fall into that trap that King Solomon fell into. And it's really there. I mean, I'd be getting all kind of, you know, terrible things that come on Facebook and so forth. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, which forsaketh the guide of her of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her power. For her house inclineth unto death, hear that? Her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. And so I'm calling up the dead, dealing with familiar spirits and so forth. None that go unto her return again. Neither take they hold of the paths of life. You go in there, you see what happened to King Solomon? Perfect example. He, he, lost, he lost the path of life. Dealing with what? Most I say he came to him twice. He commanded him, don't do this. What do we do? We, 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 follow, we follow what the Most High said, told us to do. Just a moment. <laughs> 